Time now to spotlight nuclear energy and investments made by big tech companies and Amazon, Google, Microsoft to power data centers. Joining us now for insight is Seth Gray, a president and CEO of Lightbridge. Uh, he's also the chair of the American Nuclear Society's International Council. Yes. A mouthful there. So you wear multiple hats. Uh, so you obviously have your finger on the pulse of the developments that are occurring within the nuclear energy space. We've seen recent news about the reopening of Three Mile Island, all the investments being made by the mega cap uh, tech companies. Uh, we just named a few of those. What trends are you paying attention to when it comes to demand for nuclear energy? Right. The big trend now is the surge in demand for data centers by the uh, big tech companies, especially as they're shifting to AI chips. Just massive amounts of energy. There are some data centers that potentially could be built that would use as much uh, electricity as New York City. And these companies are starting to move hundreds of millions and collectively billions of dollars just in the last couple of weeks in commitments into the nuclear power industry to try to uh, provide clean power. A lot of these companies promised their employees and other stakeholders that the energy would be clean, and it turns out some of those employees and stakeholders are holding them to it. Mm. And then speaking of that, obviously there's a massive need for more energy with the growth of generative AI and the need of data centers, these large language models, etc. cetera. Um, and now nuclear energy is coming to fill that space. How do you balance the need, uh, the demand need with the requirements when you think about both safety and efficiency? Yeah, yeah. Safety is the most important aspect of the nuclear power industry. It is what we focus on most. Uh, I would argue the nuclear power industry is the safest large industry in the history of the United States. No one has ever died from radiation or been injured uh, in the history of the United States from anything from a commercial nuclear reactor. And the new technologies, like the fuel that Lightbridge is developing, are making it even safer. And it's very important as nuclear power is spreading to so many more countries around the world with these new smaller reactors that we bring better safety than we even had. And that's what the new technologies are bringing. Let's talk about the pledges that we've heard from different companies in the industry's range uh, for net zero emissions. A lot of companies have made these pledges. For a while, it felt like those were just talking points because there, there were target dates set. Uh, but now, what role does nuclear energy play and uh, how can Lightbridge kind of capitalize on those pledges? Yeah, I think what we've seen in the last week or so in the stock prices of a lot of nuclear mm -hmm. companies and it isn't a spike, it's a shift, as there was a lot of talk of these giant tech companies moving big into nuclear, but it's happening. So that really changes mm -hmm. things. And for Lightbridge, we're developing the advanced fuel to bring to the existing reactors. Most of the existing reactors in the world could use our fuel to increase their power output, enhance their safety, uh, and even dispose of existing stockpiles of plutonium, potentially. And for many of the new reactors, mm -hmm. these new smaller ones that are being built and designed, our fuel, we believe, could work for them, too. The U.S. Department of Energy is funding two studies, one at MIT, one at Texas A&M University, for Lightbridge fuel for small modular reactors, particularly the new scale reactor. So we're very active in this space, and we believe our fuel ultimately can be the standard for generating power in nuclear reactors. So you mentioned the Department of Energy uh, funding some initiatives there, some innovation there. Uh, are you finding bipartisan support with regard to the need for nuclear energy? Yeah, it's remarkable. I'm part of a monthly congressional dinner that's bipartisan with House members and sometimes Senate members who support nuclear power, who are interested in nuclear power. Mm -hmm. And you really can't tell who the Democrats and Republicans are at these dinners, that it's strongly bipartisan. Yeah. And in fact, um, Congress generally actually increases the spending on nuclear power above what the administration requests. 
and both the last administration and the current one have been very pro-nuclear. And then, so you obviously, from your role leading the International Council, have uh, an outlook that's broader than just the U.S. picture for nuclear energy. What does it seem like adoption is, globally speaking, for nuclear energy and the expansion of it? Right. So for the American Nuclear Society, next month I'll be in Baku for COP29, the big global UN conference on, on climate change. And what the focus there is, uh, is largely on how do we generate our energy without emitting CO2. And nuclear has become more and more part of that conversation. At the last COP in Dubai last November, yeah. many countries, including the U.S., came together to pledge to triple nuclear power globally by 2050. Yeah. And Jennifer Granholm, the Secretary yeah, of Energy, has right. said, yeah. um, we're going to do that in the United States and for the whole world. So the reason is that renewables are intermittent. Mm -hmm. And back up by batteries or other means for when the sun doesn't shine or the wind doesn't blow is very limited. It's very expensive. We can't get there from here to meet these global commitments without a massive increase in nuclear power. And so part of what we're focusing on is not just waiting for new reactors to be built, but use light bridge fuel potentially to increase the power output of existing reactors. I know you talked about there being bipartisan support, and obviously I've sat down with uh, the Secretary of Energy before uh, and, you know, understand her commitment to clean energy and the space there. 2050, 2050 excuse me, is a long way away. Uh, what are the challenges, though, that you're preparing for that you may not even potentially see? Yeah, well, there have certainly been a lot of challenges along the way. We had the global financial crisis. We had Fukushima. We've had countries that were going to start building reactors, cancel them in the wake of Fukushima. So it's an industry that is sensitive to what happens globally. But this time is different, that Russia's invasion of Ukraine right. has really, really made it that European countries and others don't want to rely on fossil fuels anymore from Russia or from other countries that might not have their interests at hand. Mm -hmm. So the Nord Stream 2 pipeline with natural gas from Russia was going to be a transitional fuel, right. but we don't have that transitional fuel. Other than now, there's LNG from the yes, U.S. Natural gas, so yeah. that's good. That's coming from the U.S. to our allies. But long term, especially as they're building data centers mm -hmm. with massive energy needs, it's going to be natural gas plus an awful lot of nuclear power. Mm, that makes sense. Uh, let's talk about Lightbridge itself and kind of your role in the growth of nuclear energy. Uh, what what are you expecting, you know, kind of what's your five-year vision for uh, Lightbridge and innovation? Right. So we're under a strategic partnering project agreement with Idaho National Laboratory, which uh, is the center for the U.S. Department of Energy and the U.S. government for nuclear reactor technology and nuclear fuel technology. And at Idaho National Laboratory, we've been producing samples of our fuel material and our fuel rods. And we're going to be testing them in the advanced test reactor there starting next year. And we expect those results will be very positive and give us everything we need for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and utilities that we're talking to to move to demonstrating fuel samples in commercial reactors. All right, excellent. There's de definitely been a lot of developments within the nuclear space this year. We've seen that in a lot of the uh, news flow that we've been watching, and clearly the need is there, uh, especially given the demand from the mega cap tech sector. Thank you so much, Seth. Thank you. All right, uh, that is Seth Gray, a president and CEO of Lightbridge, uh, who is also the chair of American Nuclear Societies. Uh, International Nuclear Society's International Council. Thank you so much, Seth.